Good day, friends of Buzzy. Very exciting news today. We're going to talk about the results of the nasal irrigation study. We're going to talk about how to get the unvaccinated vaccinated. And we're also going to talk a little bit about breaking news updates on Delta kids and hospitalizations at Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. Without further ado, I am delighted to announce that we submitted to MedArchive, our preprint repository, the study on nasal irrigation. For those following this show for any amount of time, you are well aware that we initiated a nasal irrigation study looking to see whether or not the solution to pollution is dilution. The concept is simple. The virus enters the nose. When it's in the nose, it replicates pretty slowly, and it doesn't get into the lungs and the rest of the body until it's breathed in, <laughs> aspirated from the nose. So in waiting for this to happen, there's an opportunity to decrease the viral load. Now, there have been some studies that I have found in putting together this manuscript that show that there are other approaches that have not been as effective that do also involve the nose. There was a study that looked at spraying betadine into the nose. Now, betadine is a fantastic viricidal. It kills SARS-CoV-2 in 15 seconds of exposure. We used betadine in half of our patients and they used 0.1% irrigant. So betadine as a solution to rinse the nostrils has been found to be safe for at least five months. The possible risks are loss of taste or smell or um, thyroid changes because betadine has iodine in it and it's povidone iodine. And so if you absorb a lot of iodine, it can change your thyroid function tests. However, that happens when you're dealing with 2.5% or when you're leaving it on an ointment that hasn't been demonstrated when it's just rinsing in and out and not staying for any period of time. Nonetheless, studies looking at spraying betadine did not show it worked. And probably this is because most of what's happening in the nasal pharynx is in the back. Most of what's going on is in the sinuses. It's going in the area of the cavity in your head that's close to where your sense of smell is. So it's not right in the nostrils, it's way back up there. That's my theory about why it didn't work. Um, gargle studies have been tried and certainly putting betadine in gargle kills the bacteria, but how much infection and hospitalization comes from bacteria or from uh, viruses entering the throat? Probably not so much. So what we found was that there is a national database of people who have been hospitalized or at least have data on hospitalization. So the CDC patient characteristic data set has cases since the beginning of COVID. And by comparing the results from our patients with the national data set, we found that one of our patients was hospitalized out of 79 or 1.26%. And the hospitalization data given by the CDC for those with the information available was 19.9%. So that'd be like, we'd have 19 fewer, 19 times as many people hospitalized if people had started nasal irrigation. So a couple things. First of all, it's going to be biased, the CDC data, because it's definitely, if you get hospitalized, you pretty much had to get reported. Whereas if you got a case, but were not report, not hospitalized, you might not have been reported, or you might've had a case and it may not have been followed up. So the hospitalization data could be missing. So based on the suggestion of one of Bill Baxter's friends, um, Dr. Enders, I went back into the data to look and see, well, what about the rate of all of the cases that were reported, whether or not they had hospitalization data? And it was still statistically significant. The risk there of hospitalization dropped down to about 50% reduction instead of 19X. So the truth is probably definitely between starting nasal irrigation after you test positive, within 24 hours or as close as possible, reduced hospitalization between 15 and between 50 and um, 95%. So someplace in between there. Now, questions that come up. First of all, um, do you have to use betadine? 
So I, I think it's still too soon to say. Now, both of the people who went to the ED and were hospitalized in our group were in the baking soda group. And certainly we know that betadine is powerfully viricidal. So I, um, one of the other things that came about in our study was that symptoms went away faster in the patients who were randomized to betadine than the patients who were randomized to baking soda. I think that the most important part of this is flushing out the virus. And so a study that was done looking at viral loads and betadine spray did not find a significant reduction in viral loads. Again, though, that's only in the anterior part. I really think that the flushing is probably what makes a big difference here. Um, other things that could have given us results or, or ways to interpret this. So one thing is, well, does it matter how quickly you start? Uh, one issue was that some people started and about 11 people dropped, uh, well, 11 people had symptoms. So either they had a burning or they felt like they were drowning or they had spots of blood after doing nasal irrigation. So it's not entirely benign. Not everyone is gonna be able or willing to keep this up. Not only that, but of the 826 people who are eligible, we, can't, we were able to contact about 300 and 28 of them said, I'm not putting something at my nose or they weren't interested. So interested in, uh, in the irrigation thing. Now, 17 of them were already doing nasal irrigation and they got COVID anyway, one would assume, but we don't know enough about them to know. It leads me to the next question though. Can you prevent getting COVID by doing nasal irrigation? Some people would call this anecdotal. Some people would call this a case series. I think it depends on whether you're writing this up for a journal. I'm not planning to, but certainly in our uh, employees who have been using nasal irrigation since the beginning, in our friend group and in our family, no one has gotten COVID. We were all exposed to one person who had the Delta variant who was vaccinated and initially started doing nasal irrigation with betadine. No one got sick. Uh, no one tested positive. So your mileage may vary, but I certainly think there's there just the, in the same way that masks do variolation that decreases the viral load that flushing out as soon as you can is going to be helpful. Now we use 2.5 mLs or a half a teaspoon mixed in 240 cc's. So we're talking 10% povidone iodine was reduced down to a 0.1% concentration. A lot of the studies have looked at 2%, 5%. So it's also possible that the percentage we're using to keep it safe for your thyroid may be lower than needed. However, a 0.2% did kill SARS-CoV-2 in 15 seconds. So it's very likely that we're using enough of this viricidal. So we're getting all of the final statistics done and making sure that all of our, our information is as accurate as possible and represents what's happened. But stay tuned for the full publication, but right now we'll send the link in this chat to Med Archive so that you can go look up the version one that has the results that we have to date. Now, this leads me to the question about vaccination, um, only because one person said, oh, this is great, I can do nasal irrigation and not vaccinate strongly would not recommend that that's a conclusion that gets drawn here. Unquestionably, vaccination is gonna be overwhelmingly the strongest way to keep from getting sick. How can we get the people who haven't been vaccinated yet vaccinated? Well, I just did an interview with a publication talking about the people with needle fear and the younger people who haven't gotten vaccinated. Giving people a way to realize that it's not their fault that they're afraid of needles, that we can protect fainting, whether they're afraid or not, and we can decrease both the pain and the anxiety is critical. So if you haven't looked at our pain, fear, fainting, or at my hospital, at my testimony before HHS, look at that. Because at this point, we've tried everything else. Why not try supporting what people say is the problem and the barrier to them getting vaccinated? Finally, how are we with children and COVID? Well, it's pretty bad. Um, it turns out that the hospitalization rates at Children's Healthcare at Atlanta right now are about eight days away from being at the peak that they ever were in January. Most of the children who are in the ICU or on ECMO or admitted have underlying conditions. 
it's important to remind people that obesity is an underlying condition. It's a strongly related underlying condition here. So if you have a child that is eligible to be vaccinated right now, about 80% of the kids who are hospitalized are kids who both have an underlying condition and weren't vaccinated. And a lot of those are kids with obesity. So when you're talking about mask wearing and who needs to be wearing a mask, if you've got kids anywhere age 10 and up, if they have obesity and an underlying condition, I mean, really any kid 10 and up, yes, I do think that masks are important for them and they definitely need to get vaccinated. Now, uh, I'm still, I haven't seen data showing what the hospitalization rate is for kids under uh, nine and under. And the issue is these kids who don't have underlying conditions also don't have much in the way of sinuses. So there's not a big place for them to get a huge viral load. So until I see that AAP guidelines, I am not coming out strongly recommending masking for kids nine and under. 10 and up, you start to have enough uh, uh, sinuses and certainly anybody 12 and up should be getting vaccinated. There's just no reason not to. So let's talk a little bit real quick about Delta and vaccinations for adults. So probably September 20th is when they're estimating they want to initiate uh, boosters. So this is for anybody particularly with Pfizer that got a vaccine back in January, February. Those are running out. Those have some diminished efficacy at this point. Moderna is still holding strong, but we're talking 80%, 85% compared to the 95% we saw early. Delta is a bad actor. I will certainly be getting my booster as soon as I'm allowed to, but not before. Right now it's allowed for anyone who is over 65 and immunocompromised. One interesting thing I learned today is that the issues with vaccination and widely um, making tents and those things again, is that so few people are showing up that vaccines get wasted. When you buy Pfizer vaccines, you have to get 975 of them, I believe, come to a kit. Is that right? And yeah, 975. And so if you're not going to use all of those within the allotted time period, they're going to go bad. We need to get some concentrated areas where we're providing pain, fear, fainting, and shame support where people are educated, are just going to let you go in and out real quick. Use Buzzy for pain control if you need it. Don't if you don't. But we need to get that rolling and we need to do it in large enough numbers that people can get vaccinated. So at this point, um, I would love for anyone who's got questions to put them in the chat and to I'll be happy to answer them. Let me see if there's any that I've gotten. Um, thank you, Dr. Charles Shapiro. Love your input. If anybody does test positive for COVID, I've got other YouTube videos that tell you what you should start doing when and uh, still standing by all of that. Quercetin, zinc, melatonin, ivermectin, if you get hospitalized or if you get it bad um, and get a pulse oximeter, but all of those are in another video. And I really appreciate you sticking with us. I thank everybody for the support, getting the nasal irrigation study out there. I have no conflict of interest or anything to declare with uh, nasal irrigation, just seems like a good idea. I do have conflict of interest to declare with Buzzy. I made it, I did the research initially, but there's 60 other studies now showing that it works. And it's the only thing proven to reduce fear. If you know somebody who needs to get vaccinated, offer to go with them, don't give them any grief. Try not to make them ashamed, but tell them you got something that can help them with the pain and the soreness and that you'll be there to support them. We're going to get through this. Wear your mask, do your irrigation with a half a teaspoon of betadine. It's going to be fine. <laughs>